Go ahead and fast forward to the end of this video right now if you want to see all my picks right away. But if you want to stick around and dive into some of these games together, uh, we got ourselves a great slate of Big Ten football, so let's go ahead and begin. We're actually going to start off with a Friday night game. I'm talking about the Minnesota Golden Gophers taking on the Maryland Terrapins, and that's going to be a 7.30 p.m. Eastern start time this Friday night. Now, the Gophers are the 19-point favorite on the road here, total 61 flat. We're currently... Th uh, 3-0 in our last three daily best play tier package picks on patreon.com slash Brock Page. And access to the daily best play costs just $1.99. We're also 6-1 in our last seven daily best plays in that very same category as well. We currently have over 790 members signed up and active on that page. And if you want to join those folks and get in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. I highly recommend it, and it's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Now, when it comes to this Minnesota-Maryland contest, the Terrapins are plus $6 on the money line. Heavy underdogs at home here. Now, Maryland did give up 43 points in their season opener against Northwestern. Northwestern, not an offensive juggernaut, in my opinion, by the way. Uh, that was a 43-3 to stinker to kick off the 2020 season. Now, Tua's brother, uh, Talia Tungavailoa, went just 14 of 25 in the opener for 94 yards and three interceptions. The Terps threw for a total of just 143 yards, and they rushed it 21 times for just 64 yards on the day on the ground. No sacks and no takeaways for this Terrapin defense. Uh, like I said, it was just a complete and total stinker for the Terps. Maryland gave up 30 points in the first half of that ball game, and they failed to score in the final 45 minutes of that contest as well. They're taking on a Minnesota team who gained 129 yards on ground uh, this past week in a losing effort. Running back Mo Ibrahim uh, rushed it 26 times for a buck 40 and two scores. He averaged nearly six yards per carry, and even though they're wasn't much of a passing game in this one. Whiteout Rashad Bateman caught nine passes for 101 yards on the day. And of course, uh, Bateman, kind of the uh, big player coming out of Minnesota this year. Meanwhile, defensively, defensive back Tyler Newbin led the charge with eight total tackles and a forced fumble. I'm not expecting a whole lot of offense out of this Maryland squad here uh, Friday night. Give me the Minnesota Golden Gophers minus 19. And the under 61 in that contest. And before we go ahead and move on, just want to take another quick time out and welcome you to the video. Got some lines and personal leans out for Big Ten football, and that's college football week nine. But before we go ahead and dive into some more free content right here on YouTube, just want to quickly remind you once again that we are 3-0 and in our last three daily best plays on Patreon.com slash Brock Page. And access to the daily best play costs just $1.99. We're also 6-1 in our last seven daily best plays in that very same category as well. We currently have over 790 members signed up and active on that site. And if you want to join them and get in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. And moving on, we're going to take a look at, let's see where it's at. Michigan State taking on Michigan. Big brother against little brother, I guess uh, that's what they, they say, or half brother against stepbrother. I don't know. But anyway, Michigan State taking on Michigan. 12 p.m. Eastern start time in Ann Arbor. The Michigan Wolverines are the 25-point favorite with a total at 52 and a hook. Sparty's currently plus 1,200 for an upset win. But as bad as their loss was in the opener, Michigan State is highly competitive in this intrastate uh, rivalry. And as a matter of fact, they've successfully covered the point spread in eight out of their last 10 meetings with the Wolverines. And as bad as the uh, Spartans were defensively against Rutgers, and really they weren't all that bad. They just were dealt with a short field seven different times. But anyway, uh, Michigan State still ended up outscoring Rutgers in the second half of that contest. Now quarterback Rocky Lombardi, he completed 72% of his passes for 319 yards and three scores. 
His favorite target was wideout Jaden Reed, who caught 11 balls for a buck 28 and a couple of touchdowns. Jaden was averaging a dozen yards per reception. And kicker Matt Coughlin connected on all of his attempts on Saturday as well. He was 3-for-3 three, uh, three three on PATs and 2-for-2 two two on field goals. Both field goals 40-plus yards. Uh, and as bad as they played in the first half against Rutgers, the spotty Spartan uh, defense, they still ended up forcing three to- uh, turnovers in that ball game. I think it was a total of 10 turnovers combined. Uh, Michigan State was 7 on the uh, offensive side of things. But uh, they are taking on a Michigan Wolverine squad who, despite being very good at every position on the field, they still managed to give up 17 points to Minnesota in their first half uh, of their opener. And despite the fact I think Michigan will win this game convincingly, 25 points is an awful lot to lay in a rivalry game such as this one. Uh, The Wolverines failed to cover the number in five out of their last six, hosting the Spartans at the big house. Now, total-wise, you know, when it comes to the number in this one, both of these teams saw their openers fly over the posted total. Uh, Both of their games flew over 52.5 points as well. So with all that said and done, I think Michigan State should keep it within that big number. Give me the Michigan State Spartans plus 25 and the over 52.5 in that contest. All right, let's see if this one's up. I don't think our next one's going to be up on our big screen here Uh, No, it's not. But our next one is Purdue taking on Illinois, 12 p.m. Eastern start time. Now, the Boilermakers of Purdue are minus 7 on the road. Totals 58 and a hook. The Fighting Illini are plus 210 to win this one outright. Now, Illinois got smoked in the season opener, 45 to 7 at the hands of Wisconsin. The Fighting Illini gave up 28 points in the first half, and they were shut out for three quarters of play in that one. Illinois uh, completed a pitiful 36% of their passes for just 87 yards on the day. Illinois lost four out of their last five ball games at home, dating back to last season. And they also dropped six out of their last seven, hosting the Boilermakers. And speaking of Purdue, very impressive effort out of them in their opener. That was a 24-20 come-from-behind victory over a tough Iowa team at Kinnick Stadium. Nobody wins there. Uh, The Boilermakers held Iowa to just three points in the second half in that contest. Now, linebacker Jalen Alexander led the D with 10 total tackles along with a forced fumble. Safety Corey Trice also had seven tackles in the effort. Purdue uh, ended uh, ended up scoring 10 fourth-quarter points in that come-from-behind win. Quarterback Aiden O'Connell had a solid day, at least statistically. Aiden threw for 282 yards and three touchdowns. He hit wide receiver David Bell 13 times for a buck 21. All three of O'Connell's touchdown passes went to David Bell. Meanwhile, rushing wise, the Boilermakers got a great effort out of junior running back Xander Horvath, 21 touches for a buck 29. Horvath averaged 6.1 yards a carry, produced 5 and 2 against the spread in their last seven meetings with the Illini. Uh, 5-0 and against the spread in their last five conference games as well. They've been very good covering the number within Big Ten play. Now, total-wise, Purdue saw their opener fall short of the posted total. Uh, six out of their last nine head-to-head meetings with Illinois also stayed under the total. Meanwhile, the Illini probably, uh, they probably don't have the firepower to help propel this one past the number. I don't think we're going to get enough scoring out of Illinois to uh, help put this one over. So with all that in mind, give me the Purdue Boilermakers minus seven and the under 58 and a half in that game. All right, next matchup, it is going to be Northwestern taking on Iowa. And that's going to be a 3.30 p.m. Eastern start time at Kinnick Stadium. The Hawkeyes are the two-point favorite, totals 46 and a hook. Now Northwestern's plus $1.15 for an outright win. But as good as the Wildcats looked in their opener, and believe me, they were extremely impressive. 40-point victory, but they beat a Maryland squad who probably couldn't beat Grand Valley State at this juncture. And even with that big win, the Wildcats have still lost 9 out of their last 11 conference games. They haven't been all that great in Big Ten uh, conference play, at least over the past couple of seasons. I'm also expecting a complete overreaction from the public from the result of their opener, uh, along with the result of Iowa's opener as well. So we're probably going to see some overreaction uh, with uh, both teams' opening results. And as bad as the Hawkeyes looked in 
in said opener. The chances of them losing back-to-back games at Kinnick Stadium to the caliber of teams like Purdue and Northwestern, very, very small in my opinion. I was now 7-1 straight up in their last eight at home after that loss. But uh, in their last 10 head-to-head meetings with Northwestern, They've held the Cats to just 17 points a game. And as a matter of fact, Iowa held Purdue to just uh, 14 uh, points. Uh, I'm sorry, Iowa held, yeah, yeah, Iowa held Purdue to just 14 points through three quarters of, of play until their late game collapse last week. Now, Jack Kerner had 13 total tackles against Purdue, nine solo tackles in that game. This Iowa secondary, and they also forced two interceptions in their opener. Now, total-wise, when it comes to uh, the number in this one, both squads saw their openers fall under the posted total. I was also 8-2 and two to the under in their last 10 conference ball games. Meanwhile, the Wildcats on the other side have gone 6-1 and one to the under in their last seven when they travel. Give me the Iowa Hawkeyes minus two and the under 46.5 in that contest. All right, next matchup, it is going to be The Hoosiers of Indiana, they're taking on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, and that's going to be a 3.30 p.m. Eastern start time in Piscataway, New Jersey. Now, Indiana's the 10-point double-digit favorite on the road here. Totals 52.5, kind of a surprising number considering Rutgers' performance last week. And if you like Rutgers in an upset at home, they are plus 320 for uh, for an outright win. So very good value, very good price point for Rutgers backers, uh, especially on the money line. Now, the Scarlet Knights took advantage of a Michigan State team last week who turned the ball over a staggering seven times in that contest, four turnovers in their opening six drives. And as impressive as that is for that Rutgers defense, they still managed to give up 27 points to the Spartans despite their seven takeaways. Think about that, seven takeaways And Michigan State still put up 27 points. That's a lot of yards to give up. Matter of fact, Michigan State ended up outscoring Rutgers in the second half of that contest. And they actually shut out Rutgers in the third quarter alone. Their defense gave up 319 yards in the air and three passing touchdowns. Meanwhile, uh, Rutgers quarterback Noah Vendral completed just 62% of his passes for only 169 yards and an interception. Rutgers' leading rusher on the day, Isaiah Pacheco, He averaged just 3.2 yards a carry on 19 touches. Now they're taking on an Indiana team who rolled the dice and took down Penn State in overtime after going uh, for two and the win. Uh, The Hoosier defense forced three turnovers while the secondary had two interceptions. Micah McFadden led the charge for the Hoosiers D with 11 tackles. Defensive back Jamar Johnson had 10 This Hoosier offense also scored three rushing touchdowns on the ground. Indies covered the number in eight out of their last 11 contests, of course, dating back to last season. And they also got the W in six out of their last eight conference games. They've been playing very good within the Big Ten. Now, total-wise, if Penn State's running back takes a knee instead of scoring last week, the total in Indies opener would have fell uh, well under the posted number. And barring a seven-takeaway performance by Rutgers, I'm not so sure their uh, 276 yards of total offense will be enough to get this one over the number. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lead toward the road chalk in this one. Give me Indiana, minus 10, and the under 52.5 in that ball game. And with that, we're going to dive into our next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be Ohio State. Squaring off against Penn State, 7.30 p.m. Eastern start time, Happy Valley. The Buckeyes are the 12-point favorite on the road, total 63 and a hook. The Nittany Lions are plus 320 for an outright victory. Now, this is always a very close game, very close rivalry. Now, the Nittany Lions blew a late fourth-quarter lead where all the running back had to do was kneel down short of the goal line, and the game would have been over. But uh, instead, he scored... Gave Indiana enough time to tie it up, and then the Nittany Lions got robbed in overtime to lose that game. Penn State also also led a team who completed just 52% of their passes, beat them in that one. And they also allowed three scoring touchdowns on the ground. Meanwhile, offensively, I saw more creativity out of a Pop Warner playbook. Looked like the Lions ran about the same four plays all game. RPO, RPO, design pass. 
<laughs> design swing pass, lateral. I mean, a couple different looks formation-wise, but for the most part, same plays out of the same formations. Meanwhile, the defense, with an opportunity to seal the deal in that game, they let JV quarterback Michael Penix drive about 70 yards down the field in the final minutes of the game to send it to overtime. Penix would have had a tough time making the uh, East Stroudsburg State roster with the way he was throwing the ball for most of that contest. He was not impressive. Uh, but anyway, Penn State's taking on an Ohio State team who... Uh, is very impressive. They destroyed Nebraska by the final of 52 to 17. They outscored the Cornhuskers 28 to 3 in the second half to help blow them out. Now quarterback Justin Fields was near flawless, 20 for 21 passing, 95% completion uh, percentage, two touchdowns through the air. Uh, Fields also rushed for 54 yards and scored on the ground as well. He had two receivers with over 100 yards on the day. Uh, that was wideout Garrett Wilson, who had seven grabs for a buck 29 and a touchdown. Wilson actually uh, averaged nearly 19 yards of reception. And of course, no surprise here. Uh, you probably heard the name before, but of course, wide receiver Chris Olave had six catches for 104 yards. Olave averaged 17 yards a catch himself. Meanwhile, defensively, Buckeyes looked pretty sound. They got to the quarterback three times and forced two turnovers. Linebacker Pete Werner led the charge defensively with seven tackles on the day. Now, Ohio State's won eight out of their last 10 head-to-head -head meetings against Penn State. They've absolutely owned them uh, over the past uh, decade, and they're also 5-1 and one straight up in their last six in Happy Valley. Now, total-wise, four out of the Buckeyes' last five meetings with the Nittany Lions stayed under the posted number. So with all that said and done, I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the Ohio State Buckeyes minus 12 and the under 63 and a half in that ball game. And with that, guys, we're going to dive into our quick pick recap. Once again, brought to you by patreon.com slash Brock Page. I like Minnesota minus 19 under 61. Michigan State plus 25 over 52 and a hook. I like Purdue minus 7 under 58 and a half. I also like the Iowa Hawkeyes minus 2 under 46 and a hook. I'm going to lean toward the Indiana Hoosiers minus 10 under 52 and a half. And last but certainly not least, the game that uh, most Big Ten fans will be tuned into, uh, I'm going to lean toward Ohio State minus 12 and the under 63 and a half in that ball game. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you guys decide to uh, get a membership here today, just keep in mind we'll bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy Thursday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash Brock Page.